connective tissues. We're going to look at the different types of structures and cells inside of connective tissues. The general structures include a matrix. A matrix, by definition, is the non-living material between cells. I like to think of connective tissues as jello with fruit in it. So for example, if you had some jello with fruit in it, the jello itself would be considered to be the matrix. Um, the fruit that would be inside of the jello would be considered to be the cells, let's say, that are inside of the matrix. Another structure you'll find inside of connective tissues are cells called fibroblasts. Blasts means that it's a cell that's going to be creating something. So in this case, it's going to be creating fibers inside of the connective tissue. So it's almost full, forming like a scaffold, if you will, um, of fibers inside of the matrix. The next type of cell that you may find in some connective tissues are fat cells. The fat cells are called adipocytes. Site means cell. Adipo informs us that it is a fat cell. They contain lipid, which is uh, a storage form now of the fat. The mast cells that can be found in connective tissues are immune cells. Their job is to release histamine. Histamine will initiate an allergic reaction or an inflammatory response. Other types of cells that can be found in connective tissues would be white blood cells. These also function in immunity. Collagen fibers can be found. These are proteins and their function is to resist compression, which is why you know the movie stars stick it into their lips um, because it's a good structural protein. Elastic fibers can also be found inside of connective tissues. Elastic fibers are important, um, you would probably think, for stretch. And although they are important for stretch, moreover, they're important for recoil. So they're a protein that can stretch and then recoil. And uh, an example of that, if you, you know, get up in the morning and you put your underwear on, you have to pull your underwear out to step into them, you pull them up, you let them go, and then they smack back to your hips. That important part about your underwear, let's say, is that it smacks back to your hips. Um, it wouldn't be very good if you pulled them out, stepped into them, pulled them up, and then they fell back down. So you get that elastic fibers, although they do stretch, are really important for recoil to go back to their original position. The other type of fiber that you can find is a reticular fiber. These form scaffolding for your soft organs, such as your spleen. This picture here is just out of your textbook, kind of showing you some of the different cells and or um, fibers that you would have. The orange squiggly fibers are your elastic fibers. The orange large fibers would be your um, collagen. And then the purple cells attached to those are going to be fibroblasts. You can also see a thin branching fiber in blue. That's a reticular fiber. Um, we've got a series of white blood cells in there. And then the yellow cells that you can see are adipocytes or fat cells. There are a couple different types of connective tissues. One of them is a loose connective tissue or sometimes called areolar connective tissue. This tissue is very, very flexible. It allows um, quite a bit of movement. You can find it around organs around your muscles and around blood vessels. So it does hold those structures in place but still allows quite a bit of movement. The next type of connective tissue is a dense connective tissue. Dense connective tissue is very, very strong. It's significant in that it resists stretching along its axis. Tendons and ligaments are good examples of a dense connective tissue. Again, they're really strong and they resist uh, pulling and stretching forces. Taking a look at this picture, the bottom left is an areolar or a loose connective tissue. The one up at the top is a dense connective tissue. So you can see in the dense connective tissue how close the collagen fibers are packed into one another. Another type of connective tissue is elastic connective tissue. 
This is a stretchy type of connective tissue, and as A4 mentioned, we talked about how it recoils nicely. The stomach and the urinary bladder are both examples of organs that would have a lot of connective, I'm sorry, elastic connective tissue in them. On days when you eat lots and lots of food, like Thanksgiving, your stomach is going to stretch significantly. However, after that food is digested and moves along the digestive tract, the organ should recoil back to its original shape and size. Same thing with the urinary bladder. When you void your urinary bladder, it should recoil back to its original shape and size. Reticular connective tissue is going to have a lot of reticular fibers in it and as a result is going to end up being a network of support. The spleen, as mentioned before, is a good example of where you can find reticular connective tissue as well as in your lymph nodes. Taking a look at this picture, on the bottom left, we have elastic connective tissue, and on the top right, we have reticular connective tissues. There are also a group of specialized connective tissues. Cartilage is one of the specialized types of connective tissue. Cartilage has cells called chondrocytes. Chondro refers to the cartilage, site again refers to cell. So by definition, chondrocytes are cartilage cells. And the chondrocytes are sitting inside of a space called a lacuna. So they're the space in which the chondrocyte sits. If I get back to my example of connective tissue being jello with fruit in it, remember that the matrix was the jello. In this case, the chondrocytes would be the fruit. They would be the spaces. I'm sorry, the, the cells. So if you decided to stick your finger into the jello, grab a piece of fruit, and pull that piece of fruit out, there would be a space left where that fruit used to be. That space would be analogous to the lacuna. Bone is another type of specialized connective tissue. The cells, however, inside of bone are called osteocyte. Osteo refers to bone, site again refers to cells. So by definition, osteocytes are bone cells. Lacuna is the same thing in a bone as it is in cartilage. Since bone is alive, the cells inside of the matrix uh, are sitting in a space called a lacuna. The difference, of course, is that bone is a solid matrix where cartilage is more of a semi-solid matrix. Taking a look here, the bottom left is bone. You can see the characteristic circular pattern. The one above that is cartilage. Other types of specialized connective tissue involve uh, blood. Blood is made up of a couple different parts. One part of blood is called plasma. Plasma is the liquid component of blood. So if you took your blood, donated it, put it into a test tube, stuck it in a centrifuge, it would spin it really, really fast, this plasma would separate from the cells. So the plasma would be the liquid component floating on top and all the cells would sink down to the bottom. The other components of blood are red blood cells and white blood cells. Adipose is another category of specialized connective tissue. Adipose tissue is made out of adipocytes. And since we've already looked at what an adipocyte is, we know that it is a fat cell. The function of adipose tissue is fat storage. Fat yields a lot of energy, and in the event that your body needs extra energy, you can break down some of the fat that you've got stored. Taking a look again at this picture, the top right is a picture of blood. The little red cells are the red blood cells, and the larger purple cells are the white blood cells. On the bottom, you can see adipose tissue. Basically, adipose tissue is a cell filled with lipid, so lots and lots of fat, so much so that the nucleus of the cell gets pushed off way to the side. So they are big vacuoles full of fat. 